So, Motorcycle Wild Camper asked for a video about stators, and uh, I figured if I uh, already have my second gen on the table, I might as well do a charging system test just for shiggles, and uh, kind of talk through what goes into it. So, your stator and the pickup coil, the thing that senses the uh, where the crank is, basically crank position sensor, are one unit and they live behind here. I'm not taking this bike apart, so it'll be, I'm gonna have to kind of talk through it. Then this wire kind of snakes its way through and ends up in the tail. Uh, I don't want to take apart the tail right this minute. And on a second gen, there's an easier spot to do that same test because they're all the same wires. And obviously, if you don't have a problem, then you don't have to uh, go deeper. If you do, then obviously you might want to actually just test the stator. So uh, the, on a second gen, on a first gen, it's all in the tail, so no option but to take apart the tail. On a second gen, here is your regulator rectifier. And off of it comes off a couple of wires. And... You may, with some small hands, be able to unplug it here without having to take apart half the bike. You can probably see it better with a little more light, but there are two connectors that I will need to unplug, and I will need to get the far side of them in order to see what's uh, going on with the stator. I actually only need to unplug the one with the three wires coming out of it, the three black wires. On a first gen, that would be in the tail, and that would be three yellow wires. But on a second gen, three black wire prong. I'm gonna try to get in there and uh, unplug it. And for those that enjoy watching me suffer, Here's what unplugging it is going to look like. <laughs> Basically, trying to get my hand in there and squeeze down the one pin on the connector. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to squeeze this. Um, I wish I had smaller hands. But... Eventually, should be able to. One of the tricks for getting connectors apart, if they don't, if they're stubborn and they're stuck, is to push them back together first. So, yeah, I'm gonna try that. All right, maximum masochism achieved. So here is a three three prong connector. The uh, same connector as comes off of the stator and here's what we're going to do with it. So for the first part of the test, I'm just going to demo this on the loose one. What we're after is seeing that there are that all three paths of travel are closed so that um, as the thing works, all the three all the three phases or whatever are available and to do that you set the voltmeter to ohms to the resistance setting and uh, basically all you're doing is you're testing that the circuit is continuous across all three phases so on my cheapo tester uh, it will show some resistance like 0 0.08 0 0.8 ohms um if it's showing higher it could be because i'm not fully uh like these probes are a little bigger than the connector so it's showing that um hey i have some resistance but not a whole lot and then you check that across all three combinations so top and left top and right and then left and right. You can kind of see me doing that on this loose stator. Now this is going to be a little harder up top on the bike 
because of the space and lighting situation, but let's try it. So I'm going to try to get the, the probes into the connector. Yes, this is super cramped. It may actually help to move it out to here. Then it won't be as cramped. So let me move the camera. Here's our connector. Here's my multimeter going flying. It was not designed to be stashed here, but it will do. And uh, what I'm doing is testing that there is some minimal amount of resistance, 0.8 in this case, between all the phases. So top and right, top and left, and then left and right. So they're all they're all roughly in the same range. If I saw something large, like I don't know, 20 ohms or 50 ohms across one of the phases, I'd probably be worried. The spec in the manual is actually in watts and it's 0.2 to 0.55 watts, except that I don't know how to convert that. I'm sure I could Google it, and I'm sure I should Google it. All right, so anyway, the first thing we did was we tested across all the phases that the circuit is continuous. Next thing, for the next thing, we're gonna need to start the bike and hold it at 5,000 RPM. So let me do that and uh, show you what's going on there. So what we're going to do, and because the bike will be running, it'll be, well, it may be a little hard to hear me, but uh, we're going to start the bike. We're going to keep the throttle on to keep the RPM at 5,000 RPM and try to hold that there. Then as that's happening, and yes, this is kind of a three-handed operation, uh, I am going to have this set on AC voltage and I will test all three phases again uh, top to right top to left right to left etc and what I'm looking for as far as the number is something more than 70 volt AC at 5000 rpm so let's try it and if you can't hear me on camera uh, I'm sorry I can only do so much with what I've got. absolutely awful as far as audio goes I think you might have seen this go to about 19 volts at 5,000 rpm which is actually pretty low so I might actually want to pull apart the system right now and see uh, how it tests on a bench either that or uh, maybe something was wrong with, with my procedure because these probes don't go in very well here. So what I'm going to try to do again is I'm going to really try to jam them in there to make sure that I have a nice solid reading. 
Um, it may also work jamming them in from the back if you have the connector looser like this way, but I can't actually reach there. So I am going to jam them like so and try again with the 5000 RPM reading. Thing is my mic seems to think that it's idling at two and a half thousand rpm which is probably not correct so the fact that I was getting close to 60 is probably fine sure if you could hear me screaming over my bike but uh, I kept getting like 60s and mid 60s rather than the 70 volt I'm supposed to be getting but what my bike was doing was my bike was uh, the bike seemed to think that it was idling at two and a half thousand rpm that doesn't didn't sound that way so I'm thinking that maybe my cluster needs to be reset or um, Maybe because I popped the battery out recently, it got confused or something like that. But what you are looking for is you're looking for 5,000 RPM and over 70. I got to figure out what's going on with my cluster first. Um, so the last thing we're going to need to do, and uh, we can actually plug this connector back in now and let the bike charge itself. Um... The last thing we're going to need to do is check the output from the regulator rectifier at the battery. Well, I'm going to plug this back in, get set up for that, and show you that. Okay, nice and plugged in. So let's do the test at the battery. Yes, this is a Shurai, but I don't think whether it's lithium or not matters at all as far as we're concerned. So all we're after is that at... Uh, So what we're looking for is at 5,000 RPM again, we're looking for in DC volt, uh, we're looking for 13 to 13.5 to 15 volt on the battery at 5,000 RPM. So I'm going to switch to gator clips. So now I can just clip onto the battery terminals.
And here's my battery. Oh, I got the I got the connectors backwards. Here's my battery at idle. Uh, I just had it on the lithium charger, so it may be a little high. So here's my battery at idle. I'm going to start the bike. I'm going to take it up to 5,000 RPM, and let's see what it, what it reads. So as you can see, the it went up to between 13.5 and 15 volt on the battery. So that tells me that the output from my regulator rectifier is fine. The charging output is fine. So the last thing we, we could do is check the regulator rectifier, but I really don't want to dig in there. Um, I would actually want to take the bike apart to do this because otherwise I can't really I can't really get the probes correct. So since I don't really want to take the bike apart, uh, maybe that's a different video at some point. But in the service manual, there's a procedure for how to do the test for the uh, regulator rectifier. And basically it's the same general idea. You would set your multimeter to diode and then you would follow the table and do uh, all these pins to see what the spec says. So that's testing the charging system on an SV. Hopefully somebody finds that useful. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed how hard it is to see things happening on, the, on this second gen because I didn't take the tail apart. But uh, first gen would be the exact same procedure. I just don't have a first gen right now. As a matter of fact, I have zero bikes to take apart because those three aren't mine. That one's not mine. I have nothing to part out, which means I don't have a first gen to test. And I don't have a second gen to test. This is just my bike.